Well, let's get an update now on what's happening in the world of business. We're starting in China this hour with the death of former Premier Li Keqiang, an advocate for economic reform. Karis Garland joins us now in studio to tell us more. Yeah, so according to state media, Li Keqiang died uh, suddenly early Friday from a heart attack just 10 months after retiring from a decade uh, in office. Li was once viewed as a contender for the Communist Party leadership, uh, but in recent years was sidelined by President Xi Jinping uh, as he steered the country's the second world's the second largest economy to more, towards a more statist uh, direction. When uh, he took office in 2013, reformers had hoped Li would initiate bold economic change and he was at one point considered a business-friendly face of Xi's government. Ultimately, Li failed to implement significant reforms and his tenure saw China's economy begin to slow from the dizzying heights of the 90s and 2000s. Solange Mujan has more. He was China's beacon of liberal economic reform. A moderate, pragmatic voice for open market economics. Li Keqiang was for a decade the head of China's cabinet under Xi Jinping. Following Xi's third term election, Li stepped down from all of his political posts last March. The elite economist was passed over for those more loyal to the president and those in favor of more, not less, state control. Li's passing came as a shock when it was broadcast on national television. On October 26, he suffered a sudden heart attack after all-out efforts to revive him failed. He died in Shanghai at 10 minutes past midnight on October 27 at the age of 68. On social media, there was an outpouring of grief, with some mentioning the song, Sorry It Wasn't You, as a veiled criticism of Xi Jinping. For Li was once a contender to lead China. In the streets, too, many paid tribute. He really accompanied the growth of our generation. That's how it feels in my heart. As a premier, Li Keqiang has made a great contribution to the economy. His death is a big loss to our country. Schooled at Peking University, where he befriended pro-democracy advocates, Li rose up through the ranks of the Communist Party where he became an influential voice for opening up China's economy. He advocated for an approach dubbed Li economics. It pushed reducing risks, deleveraging debt, and reducing state-led investments. He also earned a reputation for advocating for China's poor. But as Xi Jinping tightened his grip on power, Li and his more open economic policies were sidelined. Well, let's take a look at the day's trading action this Friday. In Europe, the FTSE 100 in London opened flat, while both Paris and Frankfurt inched about two-tenths of a percent higher as investors assess earnings data. While in Asia, the Nikkei in Tokyo gained 1.4 percent amid hopes the central bank might finally end its long-standing near-zero interest rate policy. Shanghai up 1 percent, while the Hang Seng is up 2 percent. Former crypto boss Sam Bankman-Fried got a test run at taking the stand in his criminal trial on Thursday after the judge sent the jury home. Bankman-Fried, who's accused of stealing billions from clients, offered evasive answers during the testimony, which drew a pointed remark from Judge Lewis Kaplan. Bankman-Fried, the founder of the collapsed crypto trading platform, has seen uh, many from his inner circle testify against him in the trial, and if convicted, he could potentially face life in prison. International Airlines Group beat expectations with record third quarter profits this Friday, the latest to benefit from booming demand for leisure travel. The company, which owns carriers like British Airways, Welling, Iberia, posted a 39% year-on-year rise in quarterly operating profit to 1.7 billion euros. Customer bookings for the fourth quarter, meanwhile, were as expected, but IAG said it remained mindful of geopolitical uncertainties that might affect the rest of the year. And finally, driverless car company Cruise says it's immediately pausing operations across all fleets in order to find a way to rebuild public trust. The decision comes days after the U.S. state of California banned the General Motors company from its roads. The state's motor vehicles department accused the company of misrepresenting details about an accident this month involving a pedestrian. It's not the only accident that Cruise's driverless cars have been involved in. 
though the company says its suspension of operations is not directly linked to those crashes. Sharon, a bit of work, I think, to rebuild that trust. Thank you so much for that, Karis. That's Karis Garland joining us there from our business desk here at France 24.